Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. During the last weeks a lot of you have been asking if I could do a video about the delay in Bad Company 2 and how the network smoothing changes the delay in Battlefield 4. So today we are going to have a look at that. Just like in my previous videos, the setup I have here are two PCs using separate fiber internet connections, games run at 60 frames per second, monitors are 60 Hz, and the camera that records is running at 1080p with 60 frames per second. Servers I connect to have a ping of 20 to 25 milliseconds for both PCs. I always fire 50 rounds, then count the frame difference in the recorded footage and take the average. Since what I'm doing here is the same as I've done in the previous videos, I'm going to be a little bit quicker in the testing and not explain every fine detail. If you watched my previous videos, then you should be very familiar with the tests. But why start with Bad Company 2? Let's go back even more to Battlefield 2, which is still my favorite Battlefield game. Battlefield 2 was released in 2005 using the Refractor 2 engine. Back at the day, the tick rate was not a very popular topic as it is today. What I could find is that Battlefield 2 seems to have used a rate of 36. This game is 9 years old, so we would guess that today's games are far superior and have a far shorter delay, right? Let's find out. So the average delay is 9 frames, which is about 150 milliseconds. Not really amazing, but again, this game is 9 years old. Unlike the new Battlefield titles which are using the Frostbite engine, you can host your own server for Battlefield 2. You could just use the create local match inside the game or install the dedicated server on a PC at home or at a LAN party or on an hosted server. Now let's have a look what the delay is like when I play on my local dedicated server. So as you can see the delay is very small. It is just 4 frames, 66.66 milliseconds. That is why playing shooters on a LAN is always a much better experience than over the internet. And kids? This is why we want a LAN mode and this is why we want dedicated server files so that we can set up a server and have an awesome LAN party. So compared to playing locally there is a huge difference in the delay for playing online. That playing on a local server has a short delay is expected, but such a big difference is a surprise. I tested this on multiple servers, it didn't matter if the server was empty or if there were players on them. It just seems that this is the best the netcode could do 9 years ago when playing over the internet. Now let's move on to Bad Company 2. Released in 2010 it uses the Frostbite 1.5 engine. The client sends updates to the server 30 times per second and receives updates from the server 10 times per second. So let's have a look what that means for the delay in the game. And the average delay is 10 frames, 166 milliseconds. If you watched my previous videos, then this number will be familiar to you, as it is the same delay Battlefield 4 has without the high frequency update option. Now next is Battlefield 3, which is using the exact same update rates as Bad Company 2. And here the average delay is 8 frames, 133 milliseconds. So there was a definite improvement compared to Bad Company 2. And now let's have a look at Battlefield 4. And this will be a bit more complex. Until recently it also used only the 10 and 30 Hz update rates, just like Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3. So with that rate the delay is 10 frames, 166 milliseconds. 
just like in Bad Company 2. It is worse than Battlefield 3. But thanks to DiceLA we have now got an high frequency update option, which changes the 10 updates we receive from the server to a maximum of 30 updates per second we can receive. So our client sends and receives updates at the same rates. With the limitation that this only affects objects that are less than 100 meters away from the player when you play infantry and less than 10 meters when you are in a vehicle. Everything that is outside that range will only be updated at the 10 updates per second. But for what is going on inside that area, you get the delay down to 5 frames, which are 83.33 milliseconds. This means that this is now close to what you get in Battlefield 2 in the LAN setup, where you have a delay of 4 frames or 66.66 .66 milliseconds. But there's also the network smoothing in Battlefield. What this feature does is that it takes the data it receives and smooths the position and the rotation data for players and objects. I've described this in the last video in detail, even got an explanation from David, the CTE producer from Battlefield 4. So if you haven't watched this video yet, you might want to do so before we proceed here. Let's start with some good news. For gunfire, it makes absolutely no difference at all if you have the network smoothing set to 0 or 100. The delay does not increase at all. I've tested this when both PCs had a perfectly stable internet connection. And then I tried again after I increased the ping of PC1 to 150 milliseconds. And then again with 10% packet loss for send and receive. To simulate such a bad internet connection I used the SoftPerfect connection emulator. Even when using a network smoothing value of 100 when one PC had that bad internet connection, there was absolutely no increase in the delay compared to using 0 for the network smoothing factor. But this just proves that the explanation we have for the network smoothing feature is correct. It is meant to only smooth the movement, not gunfire or any other data. Now let's test how much and if the movement gets delayed when using an other value than zero for the network smoothing. To be able to test this, I need some kind of reference value to which I can compare the results when increasing the network smoothing. So what I'm going to do is the following. I have set the network smoothing to zero. Both PCs use perfectly stable internet, SoftPerfect connection emulator is disabled. What I will do now is have the PC1 player go left and right behind the wall. As soon as the wall on the screen of PC1 hits the red line, I will start to count the frames it takes the hip of the player model on the monitor of PC2 to hit the red line. This frame count will be my reference for the following tests where I increase the network smoothing and make the internet connection of PC1 worse. If the network smoothing adds a delay, then the frame count should increase in this test. I have repeated all tests 25 times and then took the average value. So we got 14 frames for 0% uh, network smoothing and perfect internet, which is our reference. Once I increase it to 50%, we now have 15 frames. And once I increase the network smoothing up to 100%, the average value is now 17 frames. This means that using 100% network smoothing instead of zero added a delay of 3 frames, which are 50 milliseconds. Now I'm using the SoftPerfect connection emulator to increase the delay for PC1 by an additional 150 milliseconds. This means that we need a new reference frame count. And that is 22 frames with 0% network smoothing. And when we use 50% network smoothing, we get an average value of 24, an increase of 2 frames. When we increase the value to 100%, 
then the average is 26 frames. Again an increase by 2 frames. Using 100% network smoothing instead of zero, added a total delay of 4 frames, which are 66.66 milliseconds. Now let's use the SoftPerfect connection emulator to add the packet loss of 10% on top of the 150 milliseconds we increased the delay already. When testing with 0% network smoothing, we now get an additional delay of 4 frames, just because that player is suffering from packet loss. With 50% network smoothing, something interesting happened. I got the same 26 frames as average. There was no increase in the delay. But with 100% network smoothing, we now get 28 frames. 6 frames or 100 milliseconds delay more than without the packet loss and 0% network smoothing. I have repeated the tests for the player rotation and the results showed that the delay is exactly the same as for the player movement. This clearly shows us that not only the network smoothing does add a delay in where we see players, but also the packet loss of players adds a delay in how or where we see them. What these tests also clearly show is how dramatically the delay got reduced by Dysolay implementing the high frequency update. This is really nice to see after employees from Dice Sweden told us for so many years that increasing the rates won't fix anything. So what if the rate got increased even further to in example 60? Then we would get the delay down from 83 milliseconds to 67. So to what Battlefield 2 is like when playing on a local server. A delay of 67 milliseconds instead of 83. That does not sound like a big improvement when you consider that you have to double the rate for that. And I agree. Besides the time the game needs to do its processing and processing incoming data, your client also needs time to render uh, everything on your screen. With an input lag of over 70 milliseconds, that's the time between you press the fire button and you see your weapon fire on the screen, there's surely still a lot of potential to remove a few more milliseconds delay inside the game client. So which value should you use for the network smoothing? Well, in my tests, when I used 0%, the bad internet connection player with 170 milliseconds ping and 10% packet loss did not jerk around on my screen in a way that I would have had a hard time aiming at him. Personally, with my great internet, I'd only set the network smoothing above zero when doing some kind of cinematic video. It never harmed me in any way to play with th zero. But 100% seems to have a great potential to harm my gameplay, as it does increase the delay in what I see on my screen. So the delays in Battlefield 4 are the shortest we ever got in any Battlefield title when playing online. But why are we still experiencing so many issues, even with the high frequency update rate enabled? We still get zero hit killed by a PDW or shot around the corner with great delays. The game still has bugs, the servers are still degrading and need to be restarted at least once per day. But the big question for the hit registration, because it's local, hybrid, client, server, authoritative, is how forgiving the system is for high ping players and players with bad connections. Because adding the delay of 100% network smoothing into the mix, I think that if the server is too forgiving, then this is why we feel that hyping players have an advantage, or at least no severe disadvantage compared to a low ping player, a player with a decent and stable internet connection. Please don't think that I'm hating on players with bad internet connections. Many players don't have a choice. They play on the servers they have available. Many players don't have game server providers near them. And the only way to fix this is to have EA get more RSPs for better coverage around the world and offer Battlefield players low ping servers that way in their own region. But DICE also has to do something about what happens in their game when you have people with bad connections on their servers. So as you have seen in these tests, Battlefield 4 has potentially the best netcode we ever had in the Battlefield franchise. 
Now all that needs to be done is to get the last problems worked out and other aspects of the game fixed that might create the impression of bad netcode. I'm thinking about the weapon balancing here. But we also need better information in the death screen that explains us how we were killed. Because right now it can often happen that multiple players are shooting at you, but you are under the impression that just one guy killed you with what looked like one shot. This video was definitely one of the more challenging ones. It took me more than 10 hours to do all the tests. But I think that the time was well spent as the results here are quite interesting and surprising for some cases. My next videos will focus again on the changes that are happening in the CTE, especially the HUD changes are very interesting. If you want to reach me, you can do so on Twitter and by email, the links are in the description. Please consider to hit the subscribe button if you like my content and I will hopefully see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.